There's a lot to see in the Marianas Trench that you won't find anywhere else. From the cutest octopus to the most grotesque fish ever. First though, let's talk about why you're better off not going. Extremely deadly conditions. We all know about the tallest mountain in the world, but if you flip Mount Everest and drop it on its head into the deepest part of the trench, its peak would still be 2 kilometers from the bottom. 11 kilometers is an incredibly long drop, especially if you consider that the ocean's average depth is only about 3.7. This tells us that the Marianas Trench is a deadly place to be, except for those already living in it. The sun's heat and light can no longer be seen and fell to extreme depths. Dangerous chasms are shrouded in complete darkness, and the water temperature is an almost frozen 1 to 4 degrees Celsius. If that wasn't enough to kill you, the ocean bed is peppered with active mud volcanoes, releasing jets of heated sulfur and carbon dioxide in all directions with little warning. Finally, the water pressure at the bottom is a mass of 8 tons PSI, or a thousand times the standard atmospheric pressure at sea level. It would crush you beyond recognition. Honestly, it's a miracle that any kind of life thrives deep inside this world. Mysterious Noises Researchers studying the Mariana Trench discovered a strange sound from below the deep. A drone was able to pick up an eerie 3.5 second noise just off the coast of the northern Marianas Islands. It happened several times between 2014 and 2015. Upon further assessment, the research team confirmed that it was a baleen whale call, but it was one they've heard before. For starters, it was described as twangy, similar to a vibrating guitar string. Most common whale calls use a combo of low-frequency moans, thumps, or claps. The Western Pacific Biotwang, as it is now called, continued to pique the interest of researchers to this day. They also hope to someday meet the exact baleen whale responsible for this curious little sound. Perhaps to see if he has a whale-sized guitar with him. The Ocean's Smallest Apex Predator I think we got a clear winner for the world's stealthiest predator. Deep sea dragonfish are known for their unique hunting skills. They simply stay still in the dark, deep water and pounce when prey comes along. Their bite attack is like an assassin's hidden blade, and their teeth, said to be sharper than a great white shark's, are, get this, transparent. So no, not even their teeth will give them away. This successful hunting style is helped by their intensely black skin coloration, and the lack of reflective scales as well. To make matters worse, for their prey anyway, they have keen senses that can detect the tiniest movements in the water around them. So, is this the perfect hunter? Not quite. This particular species only grows to be about 6 inches long, which I think you'll agree is a great trade-off. Because if it was any bigger, we'd probably be on the menu too. Oil-Eating Bacteria Oil spills are one of the most horrible man-made ecological disasters. But nature has created a means to protect itself, and this forest has made the Mariana Trench its base of operations. Scientists have found that this place is teeming with a curious type of bacterium that feeds on hydrocarbons for energy. Hydrocarbons are the main components of petroleum and natural gas. These bacteria are basically microscopic cars that view oil spills as an all-you-can-eat buffet. Similar bacteria have played cleanup roles in the past. The largest oil spill in history, caused by the explosion of the Deepwater Horizon oil rig, could have ended up much worse if not for these microbes with a taste for water pollution. The Mariana Trench houses the largest concentration of this bacteria that anyone's ever seen, and it's not due to the oil in the water either. Closer to the ocean floor is another type of bacteria that feeds on other microorganisms to produce a form of hydrocarbon. It's a delicate balancing act by nature that you gotta agree is pretty interesting. The Cutest Octopus One look at its smiling mug and you'll immediately understand why they call it Dumbo. The Dumbo octopus looks just like the cartoon elephant that inspired its name. It's got two large fins right behind its eyes and resemble flappy ears, and it flies around like Dumbo too. The same ear-like fins do the jump of propelling it through the water. Its legs are also comically short, and are tucked away inside what appears to be a skirt. But don't let its cute looks fool you. Instead of a beak-like mouth found in most other octopi, the skirt opens up to reveal a gaping maw that grabs its prey to consume it whole. This creature feeds on crustaceans, sea snails, worms, and just about everything it can get its, uh, well, mouth on. It thrives in very deep water and lords over almost everything on the ocean floor. They come in an adorable size as well, about 8 inches long on average. But near the ocean floor, Dumbo Octopi enjoy life unchallenged. Like the dragonfish, there's no need for them to be any bigger. Yellow Gunk Everywhere if you were given the opportunity to take a submersible to the bottom of the Marianas Trench, you might be surprised at what you found. I'd have imagined something along the lines of sandy and desolate, but clearly I'm way off. 
The bottom of the trench is far more gross than that. The floor bed is covered in what's called pelagic sediment. This is composed of shells, skeletons, cartilage, and other remnants of marine organisms. Basically, it's an ocean graveyard. In shallower seabeds, the sediment looks like a yellow ooze, but at the Mariana Trench, the incredible deep sea pressures turns all that dead gunk into a fine, graying yellow mud. If you don't want to be a part of that, stay inside your sub. A living fossil. We've talked about the pint-sized predators of the deep. In shallower areas of the Mariana Trench, they come larger and look just as strange. Sharks come in all shapes and sizes, but the frilled shark clearly isn't up with the times. And that's not even why they call this shark the living fossil. It looks like an eel more than a shark, a look it's been using for the last 80 million years. Of course, its mouth contains its most shark-like attribute. Lots of sharp teeth, about 300 to be exact. These razor-sharp fangs are very effective at tearing apart the shark's prey. Squid is its favorite snack, but fish and other sharks are also on the menu. They usually hunt at depths of about 1.2 kilometers, but will sometimes swim in shallower waters of about 100 meters deep. While they don't have natural predators, fishermen have killed them by accident when they get tangled up with other deep water catch. Gotta dunk another point from the human race for doing the ocean dirty like that. Now it's time for the day's best pick. The scariest thing about uncharted waters is that there might be something big and scary lurking in the deep. Signs of an Ancient Predator By now, I'm sure you and I both agree that the Mariana Trench is an interesting place. You know who else does? Hollywood. Hollywood just loves using the trench as a plot device for housing giant terrors of the deep as unoriginal as they are. Just like this toothy sea monster from the House on the Rock Museum. One popular conspiracy theory is the existence of the Megalodon. This shark species supposedly died out 3.6 million years ago. But before that, they were the granddaddy of apex predators. If you thought the great white shark was king, the megalodon was three times bigger. But granted, all of you probably know this at this point. There's been evidence that this massive creature lurks somewhere in the trench, and it certainly is large and deep enough for it to be a possibility. Just ask the team of the Glomar Challenger, a research ship that sailed out to the trench in 1985. The crew lowered down an unmanned spherical submersible called the Hedgehog. This 9 meter long ball was designed to withstand the pressures of the deep while taking readings of the environment. Suddenly, the device picked up strange loud sounds, and the steel cables holding the hedgehog tensed up as if something was manhandling the big metal ball. The researchers struggled to retrieve the ball because something was holding it back with great force. After a three hour struggle, the unknown attacker let go and the researchers were finally able to recover the probe. Large bite marks were evident across the metal surface, and some of the steel support cables had been chewed off. It looked like the aftermath of a supersized shark attack, so could it be Meg or just a coincidence? The ugliest fish ever. You ever seen a fish that's uglier than this one? Eh, probably. The deep sea anglerfish is a face only a mother could love, and I'm not even sure that's true. But I guess if you live two kilometers below the ocean, no one can really see what you look like. Its most iconic feature is a protrusion that extends from its spine to right above its mouth. At the end is a built-in nightlight that attracts prey right into its mouth. Its victims quickly disappear in one or two bites thanks to its mouth's wide gape and its fang-like teeth. You get bit though, it's gonna hurt a lot. Believe it or not, that's not the strangest thing about this fish. Its mating habits are honestly the most bizarre part. When a male anglerfish loves a female anglerfish, it fuses its tiny bodies with the females in an act of sexual parasitism. Essentially, they become one being, but the male loses most of itself in the process. Except it's sperm, because, well, that's how reproduction works. You know what they say, when you find the one, never let her go. Literally. Before we move on, I've got a little challenge for you that'll take five seconds to complete. So, here's the deal. You just leave a like on this video, smash that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell, and you will get 25 years of amazing luck. Try it, it really works. Human Trash there have been a few successful manned expeditions to the floor of the Mariana Trench. Can you guess what they found, though? Trash, rubbish, refuse, etc. Their most recent dive broke the world record at 10,927 meters. And you know what greeted Victor Vescovo at the bottom? A plastic bag and lollipop wrappers. The presence of plastics here was already worrying on its own, but the extreme pressure in the trench breaks waste down more rapidly than normal. The end product, called microplastics, is easily dispersed across the marine habitat. Ingesting these tiny bits of toxic debris can severely threaten the lives of sea creatures. 
Studies of water samples show that 89% of the plastic in these deep waters come from single-use sources, like pet bottles and disposable cutlery. So, if we've learned anything from today, it's that no place is safe from our wasteful habits of convenience. Properly get rid of your plastic, people. See you all next time!